If you have ever felt financially uncomfortable or feel that you don't have any money left at the end of the month, pay close attention to this. Cars may seem insignificant compared to your overall expenses, but the reality is that they may very well be robbing you of a comfortable financial situation. A single car could be holding you back, so make sure you understand why this one item can be so detrimental. Practically everyone loves a shiny car, with that new car smell and all the modern features. There's nothing like it to show that you are financially well off. An expensive car is a sign of wealth and success, at least that's what some people think. In reality, most people driving nice cars are in debt and have spent more on that car than they should have. With the average new car payment being $716 per month and the average used car payment being $526 per month according to Bankrate, this doesn't fit into the average budget. It is extremely common for people to spend much more than they should on a car, resulting in having little or nothing left over. This car payment is so large that it is painful to make that payment every month, and all other expenses seem small in comparison. There's nothing left to save for a rainy day, enjoy a meal out, or invest in a house, all of which could be done if there were no large car payment. Instead of keeping your transportation expenses at a very low percentage of your income, some people feel the need to spend as much as their income can support on a vehicle, and sometimes this means cutting back in other areas to compensate. If you have $1,000 in your budget that could be spent on a car, that doesn't mean you should spend all that money. It would be a better choice to allocate $200, $300, or $400 per month for a car and keep the rest for something that doesn't sit parked in your garage most of each day. Think about this. If you drive your car for one hour every day, that means it sits parked 96% of the time. It's an expensive lawn ornament. If you are like most people, you are financing a car instead of paying cash because you can't buy it outright. But this isn't free. There is a significant cost to this. Your credit, income and other factors will determine your interest rate for a car loan, and this has a big impact on the total cost of owning a car. According to NerdWallet, the average interest rate for a new car is about 6%, and the average interest rate for a used car loan is about 10%. Let's say you borrow $35,000 for a used car over 60 months with an interest rate of 10%. When the loan is fully paid off, you will have spent about $9,600 just on interest. It's not the end of the world when you consider the opportunity cost, but when you do this repeatedly, it ends up being a huge amount spent just on interest. Even if you have good credit, you're still throwing away thousands of dollars to the bank, and this behavior often has no end in sight. Borrowing money to buy a car can be expensive when it comes to interest, but the real problem is that you're borrowing money to buy something that depreciates. Some people use leverage to get exponential investment returns, and others use leverage to buy things that depreciate. The more you spend on a car, the more it will depreciate over the time you own it. When you buy a car that's already a few years old, the first owner has suffered the biggest loss in terms of depreciation, the amount of depreciation you will incur depends on several factors, such as how many miles you drive, the vehicle's brand, and its condition. You can expect a new car to lose about half of its value in just three years. There are many cars that hold their value better and others worse, but let's use this as a clear example. With the average price of a new car being about $50,000 according to Kelly Blue Book, that car will be worth only about $25,000 in three years meaning the car depreciates nearly $700 per month. If the car loses 40% of its value in the first three years, you will still have lost $20,000 or $555 per month in depreciation. In most states, there is sales tax you must pay when buying a car, further increasing the cost. If your state charges 5% sales tax on cars, that $50,000 purchase will incur an additional $2,500 in taxes. You might get a tax credit if you trade in a vehicle, but it is still an expense that would be minimal in a cheaper car. Additionally, insurance costs are almost always higher for new cars, even if they may have additional safety features. The car's value plays a big role in the cost. The insurance company will have to repair or replace the car if it is damaged, and the more expensive the car, the more it will cost to replace. You need to realize that you will always have a car payment in one form or another, unless you are relying on free transportation. 
The madness of the car market in recent years, when used car prices soared, should not be considered the norm unless you are buying collector cars as an investment. There are always expenses associated with cars. Even a car that is fully paid off has associated costs. You may not have a monthly payment, but the car is still regularly losing value. Additionally, the car needs maintenance even if it doesn't break down. Tires, brakes and suspension are literally wearing out every time you drive it, and this has a cost. Buying a used car should be seen as a way to reduce your car ownership costs, not eliminate them. It goes without saying that you don't want to buy a true junker. Something that breaks down every week will probably cost even more than a new car, plus it will be a constant headache. This is not what people mean when they talk about buying a used car to save money. Think about buying a car that has already lost much of its depreciation value, but still has several years of useful life before it starts giving you more trouble than it's worth. Between the interest, depreciation, high insurance premiums, and taxes on a new car, you could be spending $1,000 or more per month in total. A good used car will save you money in all these areas, but you will likely have increased maintenance costs. The components are older and will need to be maintained. If the increased maintenance costs combined with lower depreciation amounts, lower insurance premiums and fewer taxes result in $400 per month, you are still saving $600 each month. If you invested the money you saved by not buying a new and expensive car every few years, you would be amazed at how much you would accumulate over time. By buying a reliable used car instead of something expensive, you could easily save $600 a month. If these $600 were invested in the SP500, earning an average return of 10% per year, you would have almost $1,400,000 over a 40-year career. This is after adjusting for a 3% inflation rate and increasing contributions with inflation. There's no denying that 40 years is a long period, and there are many variables in this example, but compare this to the alternative of throwing away an additional $600 a month just to have a nice car. You could also invest that money in other ways, taking your family on vacations to foreign countries or paying off your mortgage so you can live debt-free. For those who really love driving expensive cars, the financial sacrifice may be worth it, but most people will see it as a complete waste of money when they look at it clearly. If you are buying new cars every few years to appear wealthy or because everyone else is doing it and you need to have the latest and greatest, you might want to take a hard look at your priorities and ask yourself why you care about looking rich. Don't feel pressured to buy a new car just because your peers do. A fancy car might make people look wealthy, but if you saw the full picture, you would realize that most of them are drowning in car payments. Do you really want to make other life sacrifices because of a car? In conclusion, I hope this video has been enlightening about the financial impacts of cars and how smart choices can make a difference in your financial stability. If you want to learn more about how to achieve financial freedom and make better decisions with your money, be sure to subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications. Leave your comment below, sharing your experiences or questions about the topic. I'm here to help you navigate the world of personal finance and investments. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.